first question for you is if you can say something about, uh, I mean, you have been very active uh, working with indigenous leaders, communities uh, around indigenous rights and struggles in, in the Amazon. And I wonder if you can say something about the colonial political ecologist, ecology and the pandemic. And I mean, what does it mean to think of this pandemic, of the COVID-19 situation in which we are all in from a decolonial point of view? How, is this, how does this pandemic look like seeing from Brazil, from the Amazon? Marco, uh, looking this pandemic here, in the position where I am now as a researcher and activist, so, uh, and, and journalist as well. So I mean, people who are trying to tell what is going on now to mobilize public opinion, at the same time trying to analyze and study this process in a long frame of history, not only now, but I'm very interested in history and how things came to this position also using the ideas that I learned with political ecology as we are sharing the same planet. There is a, war, a global system, economic system named capitalism who extract resources from one place, takes to another one, and there is different forms of domination of people. And I am white. I am descendant of Italians in Brazil. And so I'm not Indian, I'm not black, you know, and this, this marks me a position in the society. And I am uh, against uh, all these forms of oppression historically built here. So trying to look from this frame that makes me like very sensitive, uh, uh, that I could feel a lot the pain of others that became my friends in the past 20 years. Uh, uh, so I lost a lot of indigenous friends, working with them, ind indigenous people that I used to admire and then uh, as someone far away, famous, and then they became friends. I was very proud to be friend of Aritana, Yaola Piti, of Paulinho Payacan. I learned a lot with them, a lot. They taught me things of life. They were like my main professors of a lot of things. And then they died. So we feel revolt of that. And uh, with this, this uh, academic background, it helped me to understand what was going on in one, I mean, make analysis of context and try to intervene. And one of the things that I, I, I've been thinking more and more is that the word colonial and decolonial, they became hype in academia. So let's be decolonial, that means cool. And in many situations becoming like identitarian as well, you know. Mm -hmm. And looking at the, what is happening here in Brazil, I realized that we forgot one other word that maybe it's even more important than the colonial or the colonial, what comes before that and also continues, it means the conquest, the European expansion in the world through conquest. And this is going on right now. It's not that Portugal is conquering Brazil, but Trump and the financial capital and the big organizations, they are conquering places here. And the history of conquest of, of Brazil is not the Portuguese army that defeated the Indians because they had better uh, weapons and germs. No, it's not simply as that. It's much more germs. It's, it's, much, it's, it's much more worms and viruses and bacteria associated with bad ideas and bad people with bad ideas, violent people. The gunman that's skinning Indians in the Amazon, that's skinning environmentalists and skinning people all over uh, uh, Brazil, but also in Colombia, also in Philippines. So the wars of conquest, they always had these bad people, the mercenaries. Europe, Europe uh, always used the mercenaries. I would say Europe has never won a single war outside of Europe. I learned that. I mean, they never war, uh, uh, won a war in the Americas without having people on their side that were not Europeans, either indigenous people, either Africans in Africa. So making alliances. So what we've been seeing now is a war of conquest with local violent alliances. Bolsonaro is supported by 40% of Brazilians. Most of them are white men, my, my relatives in the South, you know, 
And uh, so I have to fight inside the family to fight against Bolsonaro. But also blacks and Indians. So we see indigenous groups divided with a minority supporting Bolsonaro, very minority, influenced by him, against a great minority of the people, is led by you women in general, defending life, defending territories. What we see here is not only a colonial structure of domination. We have that, of course, very strongly, but it's a war of conquest, blood, violence, you, uh, uh, making fun of the death, as Bolsonaro is doing, you know, like using the pandemic for purpose of conquest new territories, of dispossession people and then putting fire in it. So the pandemic has been extremely violent here, disproportionately violent. It's nothing like what happened in Italy or in Europe. It's much worse. It's much worse. It's much more cruel. And I'm in a position where my, I, I could be isolated, so I could tell that. But many of my friends, indigenous friends, they could not isolate. They were invaded by, by uh, gold mines. They were dying. So I was uh, uh, desperately trying to raise attention of whites. Uh, we don't need that to survive. Let's end the shit of colonialism of conquest. Let's live together. I mean, it's not because I'm not Indian that I'm going to suffer the pain of the Indians, you know? So I've been struggling on that and denouncing the genocide not only of indigenous people, Marco, but also of black people who disproportionately were killed, were assassinated by coronavirus. It's not that we die because of natural causes. They were assassinated. When people are left to die, the necropolitics that Ashid Bambi mentioned, it's not that we just let them die. We killed them through coronavirus. So people were assassinated by coronavirus here. And very fast, they were like uh, pillaging the territory. They were extracting what was interesting. So at the same time that the government was not acting at all to protect indigenous life, they were managing to, to legalize invasion of gold miners, of mining companies, of agribusiness, to extract natural resources, to send that to China, to Europe, to US. So American and European companies were gaining a lot of money with the cruelty of the genocide here. U.S. Uh, Amer European funds were making money out of that, supporting the Brazilian elite who doesn't care about any of the, the, those lives who have been killed. And what is the worst thing of this colonial matrix who organizes this conquest war is that suddenly people doesn't feel any pain for the other. They are not humans, they are Indians, they are black. So the whites and even the Indians, some Indians and even some blacks as well, they don't feel the pain of the suffer of the other. We lost the sympathy. We just lost a, a thousand people have been dying per day in Brazil since May. It's much worse than happened in Europe, you know. It's a, a thousand and five hundred people dying. It's a, a hundred and thirty thousand people dying and let's move on. They died. And so, Bolsonaro said, it's not only the crazy Bolsonaro who says that for no reason. It's a way of thinking who has become hegemonic in the whole world. It's not that Brazilians are this kind of people. Brazilians are product of what is happening in the world. So part of Brazilians, they, they have become insensitive to the death of others, as many Americans, as many Europeans. And we need to change that. And the first thing to change that is not only to see humanity in a different way through our diversity and see that feeling the pain of the others, but also of the relation of nature. You know, because uh, the destruction of nature that's going on right now in Brazil, the fires in Pantanal, another bioma, is not the Amazon that's burning. And the Amazon that is burning now, I, we need to feel the same pain of the jaguar uh, for, for the forest as for the people who are dying. We're destroying our home. We're destroying our relatives here.